I want to preach this morning for just a few moments on the, the uh, there's a miracle in the making. Hallelujah. I don't know who it's for. It may be just for you. The Father's planned it Amen. even now. And I want you to uh, put yourself in the place of the story that's recorded in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, or the Acts of the Holy Spirit, in and through the lives of the Apostles. For you see, without him we can do nothing. But in and through him we can do all things. And in the third chapter of the book of Acts, verses 1 through 8, in your heart and in your heads this morning, I would encourage you to just jump right in those eight verses. And find out where you're at. I love stories. They bring spiritual and scriptural truths. Here was uh, a miracle about to take place. I believe in miracles because I've witnessed them. I've been privileged to see miracles in both of my son's lives as they started a family. And God performed a miracle for my oldest grandson and then did it again for my youngest one. I have been privileged to witness miracles, divine miracles, that the doctors acknowledged it had to be someone higher than them in every church that we have pastored. Many people don't believe in miracles. What a shame. Others doubt and are not sure that miracles exist. And yet James said, if any man or woman doubt, let them not think they'll receive anything from the Lord. For the person that doubts is damned. But in the text this morning, I want you to just jump right in those eight verses because here was uh, some friends of this crippled man and they brought him to the gate called Beautiful. And they laid him down in front of this gate. They had done that daily so that he could beg and stick out his tin cup so that people might drop money in there. And that's the way he made his living through the offerings and donations of people. And so they bring him this day as they had done before time and time again. But something was different on this day. Something happened on this day that had never happened before. Something that they could have never dreamed of. You see, sometimes that's the way God works. When he gets ready to perform a miracle on anyone that was praying up here, he doesn't always tell us, go to church this morning, I'm going to heal you. 
He just decides to do it. We learn afterwards. And so here's a, a handicapped cripple man laid at the gate called Beautiful. What he was unaware of, first of all, was God. I don't know why it is that our world is so unaware of the God factor in the day and age in which we live when God is so real and his miracles so prevalent. But they were unaware of that and as they laid him down there at the gate they had no idea that two preachers had just come from Pentecost praying all night and being filled with the Holy Ghost That crippled man didn't know that. Right. And as they started up the steps to attend the temple or the synagogue, as they started up the steps to go to church, that man looked at them and stuck out his cup, expecting to receive something from them. When he did, Peter looked at him and said, look on us. He did because he thought he was going to get money. And typical of a preacher, hit a board member, not the pastor. He said, silver and gold. Have I none? I don't have any money. Amen. But such as I have, I'm willing to give you. And so Peter walks over to the man and says, Stand up. He says, Stand up. And when he did, his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Man, that man hadn't walked. Don't sit down yet. I'm not down. <laughs> that man hadn't walked in years. Walk with me. And so he starts walking with Peter and there's a miracle taking place. There's a miracle in the making. Now I won't I, I won't make you uh, go into the temple and jump up and down and leap <laughs> and praise God. But uh, he went on into the temple, leaping, yes. jumping up, Hallelujah. and praising God. Amen. I want to lift three thoughts about God performing miracles in the making. And the first one is the man. He wasn't an extraordinary man. He was a man just like we are. He was a human just like we are. But he was lame from his mother's womb. It doesn't make any difference how long you've had your infirmity. The weeks, the months, the years that you str That don't make any difference with God. And as I look at this man, he's carried by others, depending upon others, right. laid at the gate called beautiful. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know the miracle you may need. But if you do need a miracle from God... I would think you've already depended on others to do for you what you've been unable to do for yourself. 
whether it's doctors or therapists or new machineries that are supposed to make you better, special physicians. Here was a man that was not getting better. He was getting worse. Here was a man that got so bad physically in his affliction that he couldn't work, couldn't make a living. Some of you are thinking about going on disability. And if you don't get better, you'll wind up there. But you've got to have an income. And so he was asking for donations and asking for offerings and asking for help in order to make a living. Sometimes in order to make a living, we have to ask others for help. And sometimes the Holy Ghost taps those that are able to help those that are not. So here was a man that was crippled, handicapped, seeking something from others. I want you to look at that man. No doubt he was struggling to continue to have hope. I believe he was a man that was mentally challenged with doubt. God, I've asked you. I've been prayed for. I've been to physicians. What happens when you do everything you know to do and you're still not any better? Lately, it's been my experience to visit people that I love. They've run every test in the world on them. And I don't mean to be critical this morning. But they have no idea what's going on with that individual other than the thousands of dollars they've run up in bills on them tests. Aren't you glad you've got a God you can go to? Amen. In fact, the Lord chastised one of the kings in the Old Testament, said you went to physicians instead of coming to me. I could have took care of that. I could have healed that. And I believe he can. Yeah. In his time, Amen. in his way, right. in his will, there was the man. The second thing I want us to notice is the miracle. Amen. He didn't even know that he was going to be healed. He didn't know that he was going to be the one to experience a miracle from the Lord. And thank God as we look at that miracle, it didn't come through silver and gold. Silver and gold have I none. I don't know what to do to you, but in my uh, journeys, when I go down to HIMG or St. Mary's Emergency, before I can tell them what I'm there for, they'll say, can I see your insurance card? They want to make sure that they're going to get paid. Rightfully so. But the miracle took place without cash. Amen. Without credit cards. Without installment payments. I like those kind of miracles. Yeah. Do you? As I look at the miracle, he says, silver and gold have I none. 
But I like even better when it comes to miracles as to what he said next. Still with me? Yes. Say amen. amen. Such as I have. What he had. He had something and someone that made people nervous. He had the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he said, such as I have, what I've received, I'm willing to share it. I'm willing to give to thee. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, watch the miracle now. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he grabbed him and said, stand up. That man hadn't stood for years. He was unable to stand in his feet and his ankle bones were weak. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, something happened when that man tried to stand up. instantaneously not in six weeks his feet and ankle bones received strength he felt it he knew it and Peter said walk with me he began to walk and leap and jump up and praise God and the first thing he did, let's go to church. Amen. And they entered into the temple Amen. with that man leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. A miracle. It's more blessed to give than to receive. God said in his word, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together with the same meat that you give to others. It'll be given unto you. God loves cheerful givers. We've been given more than any nation under heaven. And yet we've become so tight-fisted and so far in debt that we seem to think that we can't give of our means and share with others. But that's where the miracle takes place. Yeah. Have you ever gave to somebody where it really you had to sacrifice? It cost you. And you thought, well, you know, I, I felt the Lord wanted me to do this. So I put it in the offering even though I didn't have it. And then you went to the mailbox. And boy, when you get a check from the government you didn't know you was getting, that's a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. When somebody shakes your hand and sticks money in your hand, that you've known for a long time and they squeak when they walk. <laughs> but for some reason you had chest pains when you looked at that hundred dollar bill they just gave you. They didn't do that. God did that. Right. And that's a miracle. I remember and I think I've told you but you'll excuse me I'm getting old. And old people repeat themselves. But I didn't have the money for my life insurance one month. And the man came to collect it. That's when they come to your house to collect it from Western Southern. And I told him, I said, he was in my church. I said, Donnie, I, I'm embarrassed, but I, I don't have the money for my life insurance. You can cancel it or what? Oh, no, Reverend. I'm not going to do that. When you get the money, you just give it to me. And I said, well, I'll do that, but I don't have it tonight. And we went to revival that night. 
And those special singers that weren't paid when they sang were singing in our church and one of the singers stuck something in my hand. And I thought, well, he's given me a note for some kind of information. And I introduced him and sat down. And I opened my hand and I looked in my hand. And it was the exact payment of my insurance policy. And so I stuck it in my pocket and when I got home, I called the insurance man. I said, you're not in bed, are you? Oh, no, Reverend, I, I stay up late. Well, his house was a rock throw from the parsonage. I said, have you got time to drop by the parsonage? He said, yeah. He come over there and I handed him the money for my payment. He said, I'm not going to take this payment if you've went out and borrowed that money because you don't have the money to pay it back. I said, you got a minute to come in and sit down. He was a backslider in my church. And he come in and sat down. And I said, Donnie, I want to tell you what God done tonight. And big old tears ran down his cheeks. I said, don't you think you ought to be getting back to a God that works miracles like that? He didn't answer me. Got up, walked out, shut the door and went home. But God was working on him. Wanting to take an old backslider. Are you here this morning and you used to be in a backslidden condition when the Holy Ghost got a hold of you and did the miracle that he's made in your life that's got you here this morning? Right. Yes. Last of all but not least, the man, the miracle, the message. The message of how this miracle took place in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. You're going to be healed not through silver, not through gold, not for the degrees that you got at the university. I want you to know who's doing the healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to get up. Yes. Do you remember when he performed that miracle on you? You were really down. You were in the bondage and chains of sin when Jesus through the Holy Spirit said, I want you to get up from there. I want you to get out of there. Stand up. And I want you to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. He sensed the miracle. He felt the strength. And he started leaping and praising God and entered into the temple. Folks, this house is the place of miracles. Amen. <laughs> and the healer's in the house. Amen. So I don't know what you may need from him. It really doesn't matter. Since there's nothing too hard for him, since he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. I'm excited that there's a miracle in 
in the making. I don't know who it's for. It may be just for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no singing. If you feel you need to come, just get up out of your seat right now. Get up out of your seat. Come and kneel at this altar. We're going to have a prayer. And we're going to let the Holy Spirit do the work that only He can do. How bad do you want it? There's a miracle in the making. God's here this morning. Please, let's do nothing to quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. There's those He wants to heal today. Reverend Floyd was healed. I don't believe we anointed him. He was just standing there. And unbeknownst to me or him, God smiled on him. He said, this is the morning I'm going to touch you. This is the time I'm going to heal you. And so we're going to ask him to do that this morning. While others are coming, he'll include you. He's waiting, he's watching, he's looking. You know what he's saying? You know, if they'll just come, I can do the work. The work's not hard. The hard part is getting them to come. A lot of people say, Preacher, you're giving people false hope. How can we give them false hope? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything He can't do? Every head bowed, every eye closed except those that are coming. God's here this morning. You say, preacher, you think he'll heal? I don't know. I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants to do. I couldn't stop him anyway. Anyone else? I've learned some things in the 45 years that I've been a full-time pastor. And one of the important things I have learned is the importance of family. So if you're here in the congregation and you have a family member up here at this altar, will you join them? Just put your hand on their shoulder. They love to have family and friends help them. And we're a family, aren't we? Isn't this good? Isn't this good? I don't think the Lord minds if we take time to do this, do you?
Can you sense his presence? We might need more of these services. We might not have to say goodbye to some that we have said goodbye to if we had more of these. Heavenly Father, this Sunday morning in the quietness of this sanctuary, so many times you want us to be still and know that you're God. And when you speak and bring healing, sometimes you do it in a still, small voice. And Lord, whatever your will is, there's not one disease, there's not one affliction, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, that you can't perform a miracle today. And so Lord, we believe in you. We believe in miracles. And we're asking for some today. And we're asking in Jesus' name and through the blood that you shed at Calvary and the healing virtue that flows from there. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody in faith said, Amen. 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 Shake hands with everyone. I'm glad I came to church, aren't you?